Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be seeing an interesting phenomena, one of those things that we can get away with that we probably shouldn't get away with, but we can get away with if we need to. And that is the concept of flying visual flight rules on top of the clouds. Now the interesting thing about uh, what requires you to be under VMC is basically that we can say 500 feet above, 2,000 to the side, or 1,000, at least in this our class Charlie airspace. But believe it or not, it is possible to fulfill all of those without having any sight of the ground itself. As a matter of fact, when I look out the window here, you can see that we've got this big rolling thing of clouds over on that side, but there's actually plenty of room directly above us. So what I'm going to do is we're taking a journey up to Keene, New Hampshire today, and I'm actually going to get our airplane above the clouds and still be completely under VFR flight rules. Now, the interesting thing you're probably sitting there thinking is, uh, what if you get to your destination and you can't actually get the plane back underneath your clouds? Well, you've got yourself a bit of a problem. And as a matter of fact, the first problem with flying VFR on top is being able to safely get over the clouds. Now, in the U.S., the rule states, uh, like I said, about 2,000 feet away from clouds is sort of typical clear of clouds in uh, certain types of airspaces. And one of the best ways to do that is if you point your plane at a cloud, if your brain says it's going to take 10 seconds to get there, that means you're too close to the cloud. So the first problem we're going to face here is to actually get over these clouds so that we can safely actually fly on top of them. So what I like to do is fly towards them. Again, remember, clouds in the real world are nice and 3D bubbles. And I'm seeing this little haze starting to appear around the aircraft. That is the universal sign that you done blow it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a nice gentle circling turn. We're basically going to pretend we're glider pilots here. That does not look like a thousand feet above there. Whoopsies. That's all right, though. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this nice gentle circle. I've actually flown this nice gentle circle before. Uh, one of the things I did during flight training for a lot of the CFI, uh, not the CFI stuff, is the CFI is like, yeah, I want to do some stalls, but the clouds are too low today. Let's go over the clouds. So we ended up basically having to carve our way through a bunch of clouds in order to safely get ourselves there. So remember, an airplane that is tilted is an airplane that is not using all its effort to climb. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to point myself in this direction and continue climbing sort of this way. And one thing I'll do is I'll lean the mixture just a tiny bit as we cross over 2,000. Just trying to give ourselves just a couple extra horsepower here to make it a little bit simpler to climb. Again, it's really important you stick as close to the VY in this airplane as you can. See, I'm starting to get a little close to those clouds. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a nice gentle left turn here. And we're basically going to fly ourselves out of this hole here that we've created. Keep in mind, when we get to our destination, we have to find a new hole of clouds that we can duck below in order to safely do this. Now, like I said, you're not supposed to fly through a cloud unless you're flying under instrument flight rules, but this is completely legal flying above the clouds. It's just, like I said, a bit of a disaster here for you if you can't find yourself a safe way to get down. Now, in the old days, when we're flying by pilotage and uh, dead reckoning, I really need to be able to see the ground. Look how beautiful the ground is, by the way. You get this neat little contrast when you have clouds like this. But believe it or not, I need to be able to see the ground in order to safely go ahead and get myself to the destination. But we have GPS and VOR, so even though we're not technically flying IFR, we're basically cheating the whole time, which is totally acceptable. All right, I'm going to swing back this way. I'm just taking a look at my little chart, and you can see I'm just starting to get ourselves on top of these clouds. Again, I'm still flying under visual flight rules, so for those of you who like to fly in VATSIM, and wanted to fly on a day like today, you'd be able to get away with this pretty effectively. And I'm just going to kind of come around this way, and now we are on top, and like I said, we're still completely legal here. Now, where this flight's going to get really, really interesting is when we get a little bit closer to the destination, and we're in a situation where we have to try to get back through these clouds. So I don't know how well that's going to go for us, so I'm kind of excited, and like I said, I'll do a little bit of skip trip here so yeah, you folks don't have to see every glory detail of a 50-minute flight to a different state. I'll give myself a little bit of uh, trim here. It looks pretty darn good. Let's go ahead and select some settings here. So we're going to go up to 5,500 feet because, uh, again, we're flying VFR slightly to the right. That works fine for me. We'll go ahead and do flight director mode. Uh, we don't really we'll do heading hold for now. We'll do select vertical speed. We'll do 1,000 feet per minute is not going to be happening. 700 sounds good. Autopilot on. <laughs> nice. I'm going to go ahead and press the direct to button. Like I said, we're traveling up to Kilo Echo Echo November today. Lovely airport, um, especially when the wind isn't strong. You get to use the really, really long runway and you get a really neat view of the city. There's a really irritating smokestack, by the way. L, M, N, O, P, Keem. Yeah, that's a new one. I've never heard of that one. M, N, Enter, Enter. There we go. Go ahead back. What we'll CDI mode? Suspend is off. CDI one more time. We'll go switch to navigation. Whoa, vertical navigation mode. Ha, huh, that's not a thing. Actually, VNAV is not what people think it is. Uh, a lot of people think of it's like out of an automatic fly down mode. Um, if you have a nice flight management system on an airliner, you might have controls like that. But believe it or not, that technology is a little bit tougher at this scale. So taking a look out the window now, um, you can see I am clear. I can still see the ground, but I'm about to climb on top of all this nice, beautiful marshmallow. And once I'm on top of the marshmallow, like I said, I'll go ahead and do a little bit of skip trip there to get us there a little bit safely. Go ahead and change my modes here, making sure everything looks okay. 
Uh, one of the nice little things I have, uh, because of <laughs> my way too much excitement last week, I ended up picking up four flights, so I've been playing with that a little bit. Probably needs a couple videos, because I'm sure folks would really love to see how the two things integrate with each other. That will be for another day, though. All right, so we're getting a little high here. That's pretty good. Begin Operation Skip Trip. One, two, three. And we're just going to kind of accelerate a little bit here. Like I said, I'm taking advantage of time acceleration. And we're still completely legal. We haven't done anything we're not supposed to do, even though you tell me what state I'm flying over right now, and I'd be impressed. <laughs> like I said, we got to really, really hope that when we do get to our destination, we're going to be able to safely get underneath this uh, cloud layers that we're basically going over top. Now, this is one of the prettiest things that you can see in a flight. You know, when you get on top or you get between two layers, ooh, there's a sucker hole. We now have the ability to kind of get through. Now, imagine for a second that we have an in-flight emergency. You you know, maybe I didn't put enough gas in the thing. Uh, maybe we have a mechanical failure. Maybe we have an instrument failure or something like that. How will we know that we could safely get ourselves down to the ground? Now you're looking around going, oh, that's that's problematic because now we're looking at highways rather than looking over here and trying to pick out individual airports. You know, Westover Air Force Base is right over our right. We could probably punch through the clouds and get down there, but you'd be uh, taking your life into your own hands. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll pause and I'll pick it up when we get a little closer. All right, we have made it roughly to our destination. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> unfortunately we can't see well and the only hole in the clouds that i can immediately see is we got one off our left and we're going to go ahead and take advantage of that so this is a great exercise in uh, going ahead and practicing your steep descents here of uh, when you're doing an emergency descent basically what you're going to do is slide the whole plane at an angle and you're going to bank it about 30 degrees and stomp on the rudder pedal so that we can safely get through this uh, hole here. Uh, one thing you want to watch out for is that whenever you're doing one of these nasty, dangerous descents is you don't overspeed the plane. It's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, Four Flight just yelled at me and said, hey, sink rate, sink rate. Yeah, you think? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing 140 nines down right now. That does not surprise me in the slightest. So we have made it to our destination safely. Uh, you can see we actually found a gap in the clouds that we can sneak underneath. And I'm basically injecting my plane through it. If there is any form of turbulence in existence, we cannot execute a maneuver at this speed because one little bump of turbulence would shear one of our wings off. You know, we got to keep in the maneuvering speed. So here's the new problem. You know, I'm cruising around here. Everything's looking good. It looks like I'll be able to safely get myself through this cloud coverage. But notice what's happening to my altitude. I'm now at 2,200 feet, which uh, for those of you who can do math really quickly, you will immediately recognize the fact that we actually can't safely continue this flight because we are too close to the terrain. Uh, this effect, by the way, that I jokingly call this one scud running, because essentially what you're trying to do is stay just underneath the cloud cover here in order to safely get through it. So this is an interesting scenario where even though we could get through the clouds, we wouldn't have been able to safely complete the flight. I'm looking at those clouds above my head and I can tell you that they're darn close. Um, maybe not 500 feet, but we're basically cheating here. And if you look around, look at how tall the mountains in this region are. See how the plane is starting to buff it also? And the reason it's doing that is because we have, you know, pretty serious cloud cover. And again, whenever you have cumulus clouds, you get cloud suck which is always kind of a fun little concept because basically the clouds are grabbing onto us. Now look at that. My destination is actually over there on the right. You can actually, if you look really carefully, you can see the little uh, dancing bunnies there. Ah, oh, I almost saw it a minute ago. It's right, yep, there it is right there. See it? It's right there. So that's our destination, but that's a cloud. So now what we would have to do is we'd have to actually navigate through here. So even though we could get away with this and we were able to safely get in and out of that cloud, we could not safely land this plane because there's no way we could get through this legally. Now, I know many of you are sitting there going, wait a minute, this is flight sim, you can cheat. Yeah, you could absolutely cheat, but I think it's one of those things that you definitely want to think about what would happen in the real world if this had occurred. So again, I can look down at my synthetic vision and I can literally fly the plane uh, using this built-in flight simulator that they give us all the way down to the ground without ever even being able to look at the front windshield. I find that kind of odd, but we wouldn't have been able to legally do this. So we could have tried going a little further out and trying to see if there's like a hole up there that we could have punched ourselves through. We could have uh, gone back and found another runway. We could have circled until the clouds got out of the way, depending on how strong they were. But as as we have it, this would have been too dangerous to do because we wouldn't have been able to safely get back through the cloud afterwards. I mean, be able to get to our destination through a cloud over the mountainous terrain, which like I said, is always something I want to think about. So I'll go ahead and uh, sneak up on the airport. And would you look at that? We had all this open sky we could have popped through. 
So again, that was interesting. You know, we'd had to have done some really, really a lot of research and really, really gotten lucky to get away with that. But as you can see, there's our airport now directly off of our 12 o'clock. Well, let's call it 1230 right there. Now, like I said, this is a neat area. And one of the things I hope to see, you know, maybe we'll get to see this on our approach here. Yep, there it is right there. There's like a little factory building with a bunch of smokestacks. It's just one of those kind of fun things when you're coming in from the other angle, you can always watch kind of go by. They've kind of a neat little place, a good flatbread pizzas if you're into that sort of thing. All right, we'll line ourselves up with our final approach here. I'm just going to get everything all nice and kind of ready for a landing. Let's go ahead and make sure all my numbers are what they need to be. Of course, I'm looking down instead of looking up. Ah, you know exactly what I'm looking for. Showing maps. I don't think I need to see that. Oh, I have no customs available. That's disappointing. Scheduled arrivals. Let's see. I can call rental cars. And eh, none of that really helps me at all. And there's a couple of restaurants in the airport. What a neat piece of information. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and put this thing under the ground. Uh, we'll cheat a little. And a little bit of cheating never hurt too many people. Actually, yeah, cheating is dangerous. Let's go ahead and pop the flaps down, line ourselves up. The cool thing here is, according to the AFD, you're supposed to use this runway as long as the winds are slow. Now, uh, the winds slow, of course, would be about five knots. So most of the time, you're going to be using this, because look around. The only thing I'm annoying here is a bunch of roads, and that's not going to cause as many issues. Go ahead and pop that throttle in. Uh, one thing I really wish they'd fix here is in the real plane, well, when you stomp on the throttle, you pick up speed immediately. There's no, like, waiting. It just doesn't do that. All right, we're going to go ahead and line ourselves with the runway. Ooh, got another crosswind, nothing we haven't seen a million times before. Engine out. Hold ourselves up nice and smooth. Woo, enjoy the turbulence, and we're down. Cool. Go ahead and pop up the flaps. I definitely felt that landing. <laughs> There's a thousand footers, and we're here. So hopefully that video shows you kind of a neat trick there. And like I said, you're allowed to get away with that on VATSIM. But keep in mind the VATSIM people are going to maybe get a little grumpy because what they'll do is they'll look at the cloud tops and they'll do something like, there's no way you can safely get over those clouds. Or they'll just deny it to you altogether. And again, that's only if you're doing flight following. But other than that, enjoy.